This surah, Surah al haqqa Surah number 69, that it is once again uh, earlier revelation, meaning it focuses heavily on the akhirah. And it's going to paint a vivid picture of what will transpire in the life of the hereafter, the life after death. And of course, we all know, we all understand, the first stage of the life after death, the first stage of the akhirah is the day of judgment itself. Resurrection and the day of judgment. And that's where this surah will heavily focus. This is, might just be one of the most descriptive passages when it comes to the day of judgment and what will exactly transpire with people and how people will be divided into two groups on the day of judgment. This might be one of the most descriptive passages within the entire Quran. And as Revelation continues to progress forward chronologically, speaking, the tone begins to get softer and softer because now it becomes once a person is completely coherent in their right mind, willing to listen to what you have to say, then you need to be soft and kind and generous and forgiving with that person in an effort to try to make them understand. You're not trying to antagonize humanity, you are trying to uh, win them over, you're trying to convince them, you're trying to uh, soften their hearts. And so the tone will continue to get softer as we move along. Now we can actually get into the actual text of the surah. So in ayah number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Haqqa. Haqq, we know we translate it as the truth. Because the truth is firm, it is established, and it is stable. And what it means here, Al-Haqqatu, is it refers to an occasion or an incident. The, the inevitable incident or the established occurrence, the event that will happen. And so the listener is now on the edge of his seat, he's waiting for an answer, okay, what are you going to tell me about this event? And the next ayah says, malhaqatu. This ma is for asking a question, it means, what is this inevitable event? What is this event that's going to happen? All that does is further create even more curiosity, and the third ayah then says, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْحَاقَ And what will inform you? What will give you information? What will give you some idea about that which is the inevitable event? In all three ayat, the first three layers of this surah, the first three ayat of this surah, continue to create more and more curiosity and more of uh, a sense of urgency of getting this answer. And so now you get more people's attention. Now everybody's listening. And the people that were already listening are even more desperate for an answer. They refused, they rejected. They called it false. Who did this? Thamud and Aad, both of them. These were two nations that had come before. And the mushrikeen of Mecca, the Quraysh were familiar with them. So what is Qari'ah? It refers to when you hit a person, that it makes a sound. And that's what Qari'ah refers to, linguistically speaking. In context, in the Qur'an, Qari'ah, just like Haqqa, is another name for the Day of Judgment. It'll startle people, it'll rattle people, it'll wake them up. Thamud and Aad, these two nations, they rejected this event, the Day of Judgment. They denied it altogether, it's not gonna happen, we don't believe in it. فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ As for Thamud, فَأُهْلِكُوا They were completely destroyed. بِالطَّاغِيَةِ To cross all limits and boundaries. What is this exactly referring to? It's talked about another place in the Qur'an that was basically a loud piercing sound beyond their ability to, to handle this, to, 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 to be able to tolerate this. That they crossed all limits and all boundaries. The final limit, the last boundary of humanity is what? Shirk. These people even crossed over that limit. Not only crossed over it, but they were arrogant about it, they were stubborn about it, and they went way past that limit. Ayah number six, وَأَمَّا Adun, The people of Aad. بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ They were destroyed by means of a reh, a wind. صَرْصَرٍ It means for something like a wind that is very, very cold. Like it just chills you down to your bone. Bitter, it hurts. It also refers to 
like a howling wind. Atiyatin, which means when somebody deals with other people in a very harsh manner because of arrogance. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further talks about what exactly happened. Sakharaha alayhim. Allah made the wind overpower them. Saba alayalin. For seven nights, wa thamaniyata ayyamin. And for eight days. Husuman. Literally means to cut something down. Meaning they had nothing left. Fatara al qawm. You will see the people. These people were unified in their insistence, in their stubbornness, in their rejection of the truth. And that's why look what Allah says, فَتَرَ الْقَوْمَ fiha, And you see the people there in it, in that land or in that place or in that time. Sar'a, when people pass out due to sickness, become so sick, become so ill, that they literally just collapse, they pass out. كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَةٍ It was as if they were a'jaz. A'jaz refers to the roots of date palms. Khawiya means tossed over. So it was, they looked like they were the trunks and the roots of date palms that had been completely ripped out of the ground and then tossed over. فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ So do you see for them مِنْ بَاقِيَةٍ Any remnants? Do you see anything left? بَاقِيَةٍ that remains. These people were completely wiped off the face of this earth. Before I go forward, so this ends the discussion on the people of Thamud and the people of Ad. Who does Allah mention next? Fir'aun. So ayah number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ And those who were before him. وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ And the ones who were turned over. And that's talking about the people of Lut. Bil Khati'ah. So why were all these people destroyed? Because of Al Khati'ah. It's referring to a sin. And what was that sin? The refusal, the denial, the rejection of the message. They disbelieved the messengers of their Lord. So Allah gripped them with a complete and total grip. Did not leave any signs behind. Inna lamma taghalma. And also, remember, O human beings, lamma taghalma. When the water disobeyed the levels, when did it exceed the levels? In the time of Nuh, correct? Until the Sahaba, the scholars of Islam mentioned that the water was 50 meters higher than the highest thing in, in our time. This is how much water there was. Yes, salam. Hamalnakum, we carried you, O people, fil fil jariya on that ship, lina jalaha lakum, so that we may make it tadkiratan, a reminder, wa taayha udhunu waaya, and that so that it may be preserved and memorized waaya, meaning the attentive ears. Ya ekhwati Allah subhanahu wa taala preserved us. We are from the children of those people that were on that boat. So that we may remember that our forefathers were on that boat. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now talks about what the day of judgment is. That he started off at the beginning of the surah, saying al haqqa Now he's going to tell you about what the haqqa really is. But first, before that, he told you about, don't you dare disbelieve in what I'm going to tell you. What Allah is going to just about to tell you is going to sound unbelievable. And those people who disbelieved in it, this is the fate that they had. So now listen to what they disbelieved in. And ask yourself, are you also going to follow their faith and disbelieve in them as well? So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, is what will happen on the day of judgment, or the fitna that will take place just before the day of judgment. What is it? فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدًا That's it. That's how it starts. How will the day of judgment start? And what, when it is blown into the horn, sur means the horn, نَفْخَةٌ wahida, A single blowing. In the authentic hadith, we know the name of this angel. His name is Israfil. Yeah? We know that Israfil is an angel that never blinks. Why? Because he is afraid that if he were to blink, that at that moment the command would come and he would delay the blowing of the horn. Can you imagine how serious this issue is? In one authentic narration in Bukhari, it is reported that the Prophet ﷺ was asleep. Suddenly he woke up gasping for air. <sighs> she also suddenly woke up and said, Ya Rasulullah, 
What's wrong? What's wrong? Be at ease, Ya Rasulullah. And so the Prophet said, Kayfa an'am. And the owner of the horn, which is Israfil, has taken a deep breath. And he has puffed out his cheeks. And he has put the horn to his mouth. And he has raised his eyes, looking at Allah, waiting for the moment that Allah gives him the, the moment to blow the horn. At that night, Israfil was given the command to get ready. How many blowings of the horn will there be? Three blowings of the horn. First blowing is, everyone will be terrified. The second one, blowing of destruction. At that blowing, even Israfil himself will disintegrate. Nothing will remain except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recreate Israfil, recreate the horn, and they will blow into it the third time. And with this ikhwati will be the third blowing. And with this Allah will recreate the day of judgment, recreate human beings in their graves, and Allah will cause a rain to fall, and then human beings to come out of the earth, starting the day of judgment. This is the third blowing. وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَ دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا the earth is lifted up, the mountains are lifted up, and they are smashed against each other. On that day, the reality will take place. What is the reality? Reality of what we have been told by all the prophets of God, where we will be judged for all our deeds. On that day now, Allah talks about now the third blowing. And the third blowing, everything is recreated. When we come out of the graves, Rasulullah said, we will be raised up naked, barefooted, uncircumcised. All at the ages that we died at. No one will look at each other because of the severity of the test of that day will be far too serious than to even look at each other's private parts. One shakkat is sama, and the sky will be torn up because of the number of angels that are coming up and down, and they're like light. One shakkat is sama, ufahiya yawma idin wahiya. Until on that day, you will think that the sky is like a simple piece of paper, fragile and frail. وَالْمَلَكُ عَلَىٰ أَرْجَائِهَا The human beings will wait for 50,000 years. After 50,000 years, what will happen? People will go to all the different prophets. Finally, they will go to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah said, yes, I'm the one. So then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will raise up Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will prostrate on Maqam Mahmud. And at that point, Allah will teach him how to, how to praise Allah. And then Allah, only Allah will listen to Rasulullah and the first thing Rasulullah will ask for is, Ya Allah, start the day of judgment. At that point, Suddenly you will see angels descending from the sides of the sky. Meaning, the angels descending. What's happening? Allah is coming. So the sky is full of angels now, floating in the sky. On that day, you will see holding up the throne of your Lord will be eight angels. He is established on the throne. You cannot see him yet. He is covered by light. So, ya ikhwati, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now brings us to the judgment. Now the judgment is about to start. So here is Allah in front of you. Angels all in front of you. In your right, you can smell Jannah. To your left, you can see Jahannam. Where is so and so? One by one. With our father's name, we are called out. Who is the first people to be judged? The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? So that if we truly were sincere and we were righteous and we prayed and fasted and did all our obligations, we will go to Jannah first. If we did not do so, then Allah will make us the first example for the rest of humanity. On that day, you will all be presented in front of Allah. لا تخفى منكم خافية. Not a single secret will be hidden on that day. Seven witnesses will then start to witness. The first witness of the people around you. Number two, after this, will be the earth. On that day, the earth will speak about its tales. The third are the angels, the malaika, those who wrote down your deeds that are here with us. They are looking at everything. They will witness either for you or against you. Your fourth witness is the Prophet Sallallahu will either witness for you or against you. The fifth witness, Ya Ikhwati, who is that? Is our book of deeds. They are being collated and put together and they will all be presented to us on that day. Six is your body, your eyesight, your hearing will all witness 
for you or against you. Finally, the final witness is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And any of the good deeds that Allah has allowed or will allow to witness on that day for us. The prayer will witness for or against us. The fasting will witness for or against us. The Quran will come as a witness for us or against us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will mention his good deeds. Allah will mention his bad deeds and forgive all of it. And he will mention his good deeds and he will say he accepted it. And he will give his book in his right hand. That's it. Hisaba Yasir. Yaqwati, who are the people who will have a difficult hisab? Anyone who dies rich, because they will not be able to enter for 500 years. Anyone who has harmed a lot of people in this dunya will have a difficult hisab. Anyone who has left this dunya without fulfilling his obligations that are due upon him. Anyone who lives this dunya in this manner will have a difficult hisab. As for the one who has been given his book in his right hand, he'll raise up his book and he will tell his people, Oh people, read my book. I knew that I would one day meet my hisab. So he is in the blessed life. In the highest of Jannah. In Jannah, the trees and its and its shade are very, very close by. Meaning the tree will actually come and present the fruit in front of you and you can take a bite. And Allah will say, and the angels will say, Kulu washrabu hania. Eat and drink and be merry. Bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. For all the struggle that you went through in this dunya. We didn't go through any difficulty. What's wrong with us is that we are not taking a path to Allah. This is a wake up call, time to change. A difficult life in this dunya, not by you doing it to yourself. Seeking a path of struggle for the cause of Allah. When that happens, definitely difficulty will come to you very quickly. The one who has been given his book in his left hand. He will say, oh, woe to me, how I wish I was never ever given this book. And how I wish I never ever knew what my hisab was. Oh, how I wish it was my end. What was it? My death. Death is not the end of your life, ikhwati. it is just entering into a new life. Reality is we will all live forever. Do you know that, guys? My wealth has not benefited me. Halaka anni sultania. Halaka means destroyed. Anni from me, sultania. My right and my status in this dunya. My wealth hasn't benefited me. My children didn't benefit me. My status didn't benefit me. Nothing at all. Whilst he's lamenting in this way, what will be said? Grab him. Then take him towards a path towards Jahannam. It's length, 70 yards long. Because he never used to believe in Allah the Great. And so as a result, he transgressed and he continued to sin. Nor did he encourage the feeding of the poor. Do you know how many people are hungry today? 1.2 billion people. Of them, 780 million are Muslims. Will go to bed hungry today. So therefore today, there is no friend for him. No hamim, meaning close friend for him today on this day of judgment. And nothing to eat. Except ghislin. La yakuluhu. No one will eat this. Illa al khati'un. Except the ones who are wrong. Who are the wrongdoers? The sinners, the transgressors, those who didn't pray, didn't fast, those who sin, not caring about Allah the Great. Show that you believe in this with your actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fala uqsimu bima tubusiru. So I swear by everything that you can see, O human beings. وَمَا لَا تُبُصِرُونَ And I swear by everything that you cannot see as well, which is Jannah, Jahannam, Jinns, Angels, I swear by all of them as well. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ This Qur'an that has been recited to you is nothing but the statement of a noble messenger. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ This is not the words of a poet. قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ How little it is that you believe. وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِمٍ 
nor is it the words of a soothsayer, a magician. How little do you understand? It is nothing but tanzilum min rabbil alameen. It is nothing but a revelation from the Lord of mankind. Allahu Akbar. And then Allah says, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْدَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ And if you were to even think that Muhammad وسلم, or Jibreel وسلم, had the even audacity to even add one word or subtract one word to say something that the other person did not say. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيَّ بَعْدَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ A few words only. What will Allah do? لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ I will grab them both by their necks with my right hand. ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ And then in front of you all, I will cut off their wateen, carotid artery. Meaning every word that you're getting is purely from Allah Azawajal. فَمَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ عَنْهُ حَاجِزِينَ And on that day, if that were to happen, no one amongst you could ever hajizin, protect them from me. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَذْكِرَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِنَّهُ This Qur'an is only a reminder for the people of piety. وَإِنَّا لَنَعْلَمُ أَنَّ مِنْكُمْ مُكَذِّبِينَ And I know that amongst you are few those who are liars. Those who say that you are muttaqeen, but inside you are actually liars. You still don't believe in what I'm saying. وَإِنَّهُ لَحَسْرَةٌ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And this Qur'an will be a regret عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ If you read the Qur'an, you try to understand it. This Qur'an will say, Ya Rabbi, I kept him up awake, Ya Rabbi. Prevent him from Jahannam. وَإِنَّهُ لَحَقُّ الْيَقِينَ And this is nothing but the manifest truth. Allah has said that this Qur'an is most definitely from Allah Azza wa Jalla. فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ So glorify the name of your Lord, 